Abortion began dominating this Supreme Court term even before it officially started. In early September, the justices allowed Texas to continue enforcing SB 8 while a battle over its constitutionality raged on. The law bans most abortions after six weeks of pregnancy and allows anybody anywhere to sue anyone who violates it. A bitterly divided Supreme Court ended up ruling that abortion providers can continue fighting the law in court, but made it nearly impossible for a successful court challenge to shut the law down. The Supreme Court said we can't sue judges, we can't sue clerks, we can't sue the attorney general. We can't get the lawsuits blocked, and the lawsuits are what are making it impossible for the clinics to open, because this law allows anybody to sue anywhere in the world against the clinics in Texas. A ruling in an even more consequential case is coming by late June on Mississippi's law that would ban abortion after 15 weeks. A victory for Mississippi would undercut nearly five decades of rulings, starting with Roe v. Wade, that say states cannot ban abortion before a fetus is viable at around 24 weeks. When that case was argued, a majority of the court seemed willing to uphold the law and undercut Roe, if not overturn it. The court's liberals warned that such an outcome would seem like a decision based on politics. Will this institution survive the stench that this creates in the public perception that the Constitution and its reading are just political acts? The court will also decide the fate of a New York law that bans carrying a handgun in public. Residents can get a permit to carry a concealed weapon, but only if they can show some special need beyond a general desire for self-defense. Gun rights advocates say that violates the constitutional right to keep and bear arms. It's contrary to the Second Amendment. I mean, does, the, does, your, does your right to self-protection stop when you, uh, when you leave your home? A majority on the Supreme Court seemed to agree that the New York law is unconstitutional. Such a decision would be a boost to Second Amendment rights. The court this term will also decide whether to loosen restrictions on using public money to pay for religious education, whether Boston Marathon bomber Johar Sarnayev is entitled to a new sentencing hearing, and whether to take up a challenge to affirmative action in college admissions. The term is unfolding as President Biden's commission on the Supreme Court ended its work with no recommendations. It was divided on adding more justices to the current nine-member court, though more receptive to the idea of term limits. And we may learn whether Justice Stephen Breyer intends to retire at the end of the current term, while Democrats still control the White House and the Senate. He's now the court's senior liberal. Justice Breyer will turn 84 in August and says the timing of his retirement will depend on his health. Pete Williams, NBC News at the Supreme Court.